All right, so in this video, we're going to have a look at how we can create um, a texture map that will affect multiple textures at once without harming everything else in the environment. In this case, we're going to take our you know, lovely uh, complex model of a little sphere bomb thing, and uh, we're going to bring over kind of an animated pass of some fractal noise that will turn to white, cause the entire thing to glow. You know, you can use your imagination, flash to white. Whatever, we'll just handle, handle the textures in here. So, <clears throat> if we were to do this, um, this would be relatively easy if, let's say we go to here to the concrete ball, that we have two of them here that have the texture. Um, I could simply add a layer, we could call it a noise layer. It's gonna come in obviously as, um, as just our diffuse color. Um, I'm gonna take my bias, so let's take our gain here and pull it up so it gets a little bit more crisp. Maybe not all the way, maybe about like that. Uh, I take the texture locator, make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so something like that. Then I'm going to change it from diffuse color to luminous amount. All right, so you can see here this is uh, glowing, looks nice yada yada and if we animate let's go back to the texture layer if we animate the bias going on high percentage is going to lean it more towards the black so we'll have uh, no luminous value and then as we animate it down towards lower numbers it's going to all become white and that's fine um, and we can we can do that here however we run into a problem in the fact that this ball has more than one texture on it so how do we get this to go over everything uh, you know, simple you might say, let's just take this out of here and we'll drag it up underneath the base shader. Problem is now it's going to hit everything in the scene. So this is where um, we're using a group can become very important, but we can use a group with an item level tag on it. So I'm going to create a new layer, a group, and this group right now is affecting everything. For item here, I want to take this and I want to apply it only to the mesh layer, which is the one that has our ball in it. So we'll take that and uh, apply that only to the mesh. And now we'll take the noise, we'll drop that into the mesh layer, and suddenly the only thing being affected by that, uh, that luminous noise is, um, is the ball, because it has that on there. Uh, I'm going to go one step further on this, just for, just for kicks, and I'm going to duplicate it. Or actually, I'll create an instance that I will set to bump, and I'll invert that. So now we get a little bit of an effect that it's the cracks coming um, into there. So if I drag the gain or the bias up higher, so we just have a little bit, we'll see that a little bit more obviously. But, um, oops, actually, let's back up. I don't want to animate the bias uh, by itself on the duplicate. So let's try that again, create instance, set it to bump. And now the, uh, the luminous value, you want to drive this on the main one, not on the instance or else it will um, unlink that bias from the uh, from the main one here. So now if I take this, I can animate this, and I can go from high values where nothing will be going on, drag it down to low values where everything is going to be uh, luminous. So you can see it's even casting light, just like you would expect. Uh, in fact, if I were to go here and turn off our light entirely, you'll see that this is casting off a, a fair amount of light. Um, we can even go in if we need to and ramp up our indirect illumination amount, whatever we would need there, and then we'll get the good idea of this um, getting ready to flash and explode. So you can use this for a lot of different things. It's very useful for creating multiple objects that you want to have the same overall texture but a slightly different image map applied, perhaps to the diffuse. You can put everything but the diffuse into a single texture which you apply all to all of them, and then go in here and create a new mesh for each and tag it for each individual item and then all you have to do is drop in your image map on each of those and you'll have similarly textured objects with different image maps on them. It'll be useful for a lot of places. I'll leave it up to your imagination to find out where you can use it. Thanks and see you in the next video.